What a wonderful time of the year. We're crazy busy, but most of it is very interesting and exciting stuff. More on other projects that we're working on as soon as I have a chance to make the videos. But for now, here's an update on one of them, the wooden car steering and independent suspension system. This is where I got to the last time, an early experiment with the steering box, one that holds both the kingpin and the wheel axle. Now I was advised by wise people that the steering would be easier if I could tilt the king pin out at the bottom. If it lines up with the middle of the tire on the ground or close to it, that would be best, which makes sense. But that was a challenge because of the way the king pin engages with the frame that it sits in. The top of the box wouldn't fit well with the bottom of the frame when it rotated. But then I realized I could achieve the same thing if I tilt the axle instead. It looks like the axle would slope down, but once it's horizontal again, then the kingpin is inclined. Yet the box and the kingpin are still at right angles to the frame. How mysterious. Anyway, it seemed worthy of an experiment. So I tipped up some 18 millimeter ply by five degrees and machined out recesses for the flanged bearings. So they're half in and half out of the wood. And then I made up a box around them with bearings at the top and the bottom for the kingpin. I know I should have a thrust bearing at the top, but I can't find a 12 millimeter one. I just have to keep looking. Then I set about making a suspension arm for it to sit in. The first one I cut was from 18 millimeter ply, about three quarters of an inch thick. I decided though that it was unnecessarily heavy and big. So I redrew everything and cut a smaller version out of 12 millimeter birch ply. Now this is good stuff and very expensive, very strong, but I'm glad I did it because looking at it, I feel it will be strong enough even at only half an inch. And it's very light. It didn't include the necessary cutouts for the steering arm though. And I thought I could make it smaller even in some places. So I started again. I'm trying to keep the weight down all the time. It's one of the key challenges of this project. People keep asking me why I don't use car parts or motorbike parts or something. Much too heavy people, I'm trying to make a machine that is so light it can be cycled around. Yes, it will have a motor too, but that's to assist, not to do all the work. So that's why I'm seeing how far I can get with plywood. Remember, steel can weigh 20 times heavier than plywood for the same volume, depending on the type of plywood. 20 times heavier. I looked it up. Obviously, I still have to use steel sometimes, but the less steel, the better. I also won't be using stones. This arm is made of cheapy ply. You won't be able to cope with a full strength test, but because I'm still trying to work out the shapes and sizes that I need, I've um, gone, I've moved over to that. I did reduce the width of the whole arm and the length of it and made provision for the steering linkage and glued it all up again to see how it looked. But that still didn't work. It's closer but I need to change the size and the shape of the cutouts again. 
Now I replaced the big heavy nut on the inside of the wheel shaft with a welded on washer and that meant the cutout could be smaller, which is a good thing, but I had to enlarge the cutout for the steering linkage too. So I gained some and I lost some. Incidentally, yes, thanks, I'm heading for the Ackerman steering, but I can't set that up properly till I know the distance between the wheels in both directions, forwards and sideways. There are so many variables in this project, it's hard to know where to start. Anyway, eventually I cut these two suspension arms out. I set a pivoting rod up for them, welded to an old shopping trolley and threaded them on. I think it all looks chunkier than it actually is. The wooden bits weigh very little. Now to connect both wheels. I'm putting a hinge in the linkage arm so it can do whatever the suspension arm does. Ashley found these little ball joints for the ends and I'm just using a bracket for now to see if it all works. Adjusting the tracking is easy, you just change the length of the arm. Now you can see what I'm heading for. Having the steering rod arranged inside the suspension arms might save a bit of space somewhere else, but I'm still looking at that. Now, ooh, not too bad, eh? And lifting the wheel up doesn't affect the steering at all, which was a bit of a worry. Now, what's still missing are some springs to hold the body up or hold the wheels down. For those, I need fixed points above or below the ends of the arms, points that are fixed to the rest of the car. The springs themselves could be what you'd find on a bicycle, little springs and dampers, or perhaps rubber in compression or expansion, something lightweight anyway, but perhaps that could wait till I get the fixed points in place. Not quite ready for that yet. Now, all that you've watched so far is just an experiment to see how independent suspension might look in this little wooden car. That is when the front wheels can hop up and down independently of each other. But I haven't given up on the other basic sort of suspension, floating beam suspension, where the two wheels are attached to the same beam and the beam itself moves up and down. Both sorts have their advantages, floating beams make the steering simpler because the wheels stay the same distance apart all the time but neither wheel tips over as much when it goes over a bump because both wheels tip a little bit but that floating beam needs supporting somehow so we're talking about leaf springs or an array of compression springs in some sort of frame 
and that all means added weight. So I was looking around at what I could use as alternatives to trailer leaf springs and Ashley came up with these things, laminated wooden slats from inside a bed. Perfect, except how well would they stand up to getting wet all the time? I don't know. I also looked at these things, hay bob tines. Excellent spring steel and nicely finished and very cheap. A pair of these cost just 11 euro. They wouldn't just move up and down though. They would wobble sideways. These things though would just move up and down. It's a pry bar. Again, very good quality steel and cheap to buy, but perhaps this one's a bit too stiff. Any other ideas when well, I'm still considering all the options? The mechanics of all this is really interesting. If I'd known how complicated it is though, I might not have started. <laughs> but I'm glad I have, and at least now I have something full size to study. Now I'm wondering whether it's a bit too wide. Outside to outside of the wheels, it's just on a meter. But one person, what do you think? <laughs> 